Every morning I wake up, I'm always on the prowl for a good deal. And lately I've been getting asked a few questions about the Ryzen 7 2700. Now currently you can get this CPU for 210 US dollars. And at that price, it's really good value. For eight cores, 16 threads, it's overclockable, comes with an included cooler, but right around the corner in a week's time, Zen 2 is going to be released. And although the value for money on this Ryzen 7 2700 is pretty much going to be unmatched in the new CPU scene, it still leaves the question of, should you wait a week's time, even if you wanna purchase something like the Ryzen 7 2700, or should you just buy it now and skip the wait because prices of this stuff might go up after the Zen 2 launch. Well, today I'm gonna to give you guys some suggestions because ultimately you can do what you want with your money, but I'm definitely gonna give you guys my advice as a deal hunter so you can save the most money going into this Zen 2 launch. So the two CPUs right now that are looking really good on the new market is the Ryzen 5 2600 at $150 and also the Ryzen 7 2700 at 210 USD. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky because if you're building a whole new entire system and the whole build for instance is going to tally $1000, then paying an extra $100 or so for that Ryzen 7 3700X when it's released, I would say would be worth the wait especially if it's going to deliver what AMD has promised that it's going to deliver at CES and also Computex. But on that note, there's some other things that we've got to look at because the smartest play in my opinion would be to look back at launches like Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. And when those CPUs launched, everyone was buying motherboards, they were buying SSDs, they were buying cases, power supplies, RAM, and all the prices of these things went up after these CPUs and motherboards were launched. But if we learn anything from that, it's that is if you know you're going to be building an entirely new system, then the best way to be would be to get all the extra pieces except the CPU and the motherboard, or in this case, I'd actually recommend getting a motherboard like this one right here, the B450 Tomahawk, which has USB flashback and it will support the latest third gen Ryzen chips. So if you get a motherboard like this, you get some DDR4 memory, for instance, you can get 3200 megahertz CL16 for $80 for a 16 gigabyte kit. I haven't seen prices this cheap on memory in a long time. And then you've got things like power supplies, cases, SSDs, all this stuff is currently going for pretty much under retail at really good prices right before launch. So if you guys definitely know that you're going to be building a new gaming PC for either yourself or a friend, it would definitely be a wise decision in my opinion to get all the stuff except the CPU, except the graphics card, right here today so you can save yourself even possibly a hundred dollars on a brand new build now of course buying a b450 motherboard you're not going to be getting support for the latest pci generation 4 but as i said in my previous anti-lag video that i did when i was over in the usa it was one of those things that i can't see a whole lot of people adopting and needing and especially if you're a gamer i don't see any gamer that's going to be able to utilize PCIe Gen 4 and get any benefit for say PCIe Gen 3. The biggest benefit I saw out of PCIe Gen 4 was some of those new NVMe SSDs and also 8K video editors. And of course, when it comes to those brand new X570 motherboards, they're gonna cost a lot more than a B450. So lastly about the CPUs, right? If you buy the 2700 today, even though you're getting a good deal, you may get buyer's remorse if those new Ryzen 3rd gym chips are launched and they're as good as AMD says they are. I can only imagine building a PC myself and then being like, oh, I wish I had waited a week so I could get on that new latest and greatest because it is looking like it's gonna be a great release. 15% IPC increase and also dropping down to seven nanometer, which brings its own benefits as well, namely lower power consumption, especially clock for clock. But some other things to talk about in relation to Zen 2 is we can also see that the memory speeds are now supported at higher megahertz. 3200 megahertz official means that you'll definitely be able to get a kit like the one we've looked at today and you'll have no problems running it with the new Ryzen 3000 series chips. So my advice going into the video so far is definitely hold out on the CPU. But now what about a graphics card? Uh, in my recent parts hunt video I did yesterday, I'll put the link up here for you guys, I was seeing that the used market is definitely starting to dry up in terms of good deals. So this means that the power is gonna swing back to the new market and the GPUs. However, we are literally right around the corner 
from getting two new launches from both AMD and Nvidia with the Super and also the 5700 XT and non-XT series. This means that we're gonna hopefully see the prices of current new GPUs on the market come down in price. So everything is pointing towards just waiting this extra week to see how prices of new parts shift and fluctuate. And my guess is even that Ryzen 7 2700 after the launch of Zen 2 may even come down a little bit more. However, on the flip side of things, everything else that we've talked about today, things like power supplies, cases, DDR4 memory, motherboards, they're all going to go up in price once the new Zen 2 and also these new graphics cards are launched. So basically guys, if you wanna get the best deals on building a new system around Zen 2, my advice would be to buy everything right now, but the CPU, but the GPU, and then you'll have happy days ahead. And also on that note, be careful if you're gonna buy an older motherboard like X470 and X370 or B350, B450, make sure it has USB flashback or of course, if you've got an older CPU like a Ryzen 3 1200, you can use that and then uh, update your BIOS once these new CPUs are out. And of course, extract a lot of value out of some of the already really good prices that you're gonna see on some of these motherboards from the previous generations. And with that aside, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, let us know in the comment section below what you think about my advice here today. Do you have a different strategy going into Zen 2? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that said, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. But if you're enjoying this one, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring the bell on the way out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.